Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark by Laurie Wyman and starring Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee. We, all of us, have our little secrets. Even I, Michael de Morgan, announcer of this parish, have one. But uh, I'm not telling you, otherwise it wouldn't be a secret. Oh, go on. <laughs> Force yourself, Mickey. Mr. Phillips, will you please stop taking the Michael? Now, uh, Captain Povey doesn't have a secret. He wishes he had, but he is married to Ramona Povey. And with her about, he's got about as much chance as Guy Fawkes without a match. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee thinks he has a million secrets. Unfortunately, they're all known to everybody else, including the police. <laughs> However, Lieutenant Commander Murray really does have a secret, which I'm not prepared to divulge. All I will say is that he and his newfound lady acquaintance, Rita for Font Bittox, <laughs> just had a swinging evening at the Gosport and Haven't Gasworks Gymkhana, <laughs> known for short as the GNH GG. Well, Rita, dear, I suppose this is as far as we go. <laughs> I'm saucy, Stephen Kins. No, 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 uh, no. What I meant was, uh, I'll, um, I'll have to get out now and uh, rejoin my ship. I shall never forgive myself for parking that horse box on your toes. No, <laughs> no, it, it, it was my fault. I shouldn't have been standing on the pavement. <laughs> In any case, you drove it off again. <laughs> Fairly quickly. Oh, never mind, Stevie Kins. Look on the bright side. I mean, the horse wasn't in the box at the time, so you didn't frighten him with your shouts. Hmm. <laughs> I, I do apologise for making all that fuss. <laughs> you are a baby. I mean, it was only one tiny wheel. Quite. <laughs> and it was full of air, so it can't weigh all that much. <laughs> well, uh, I'd... Uh, Better be going. Oh, 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 I'm terribly sorry, Rita. Oh, what happened? In reaching for my cap, I inadvertently touched your elbow with my little finger. Oh, crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, done now. You mean you don't mind? You don't hate me for it? Of course not. Angel, <laughs> I, I knew it would come to this sooner or later. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel so happy I, I could sing. Rio Rita, life is sweeter and completer. <laughs> I don't seem to remember the rest of the words. <laughs> well, I think that's just as well. It's been a wonderful evening. Yes. Would have been even better if I'd won a prize at the Jim Carner. Oh, that, that was favouritism. I made you the winner. As far as I could see, you and your horse knocked down far more fences than anybody else. <laughs> oh, don't forget to take the books I promised to lend you. They're, they're over here in the glove pocket. You can reach across me if you like. Uh, no, 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 I'll... Uh, I'll uh, wait till you pass them over. Oh. Oh, all right, then. Here you are, the works of Dostoevsky, the life and times of Lenin, Dr. Zhivago, the seven pillars of wisdom, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, and the siege of Stalingrad by Malcolm Magowicz. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Well, this is it. Time to, um, go. Uh, yes. Um... Would you mind if I kick, kick, could I see you again on Thursday? <laughs> oh, well, yes, yes, of course. Uh, what say we take in a flick? They are showing the original version of War and Peace at the Bijou Majestic Kinema Gosport. It stars Boris Karamelovich and Igor wapsky korsikov Oh, sounds fun. Are there the subtitles? Of course, in French. <laughs> Sounds us. <laughs> I shall look forward to it. <laughs> See you in the foyer at eight. Yeah, at five, darling. You must remember, it lasts seven hours. Oh, of course. Well, uh, time to um, go. Uh, 
Would you mind if I kick, 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 kick? Oi, you two in there, wind your little window down. <laughs> I want to say something. You can't park here. This is Admiralty property. It is also the pavement. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Constable. This lady is very kind of gave me a lift because she'd run over my... Uh, uh, we'd, we'd been to the gym. Uh, just leaving. See you on Thursday at, at five, then, uh, Miss... <laughs> What? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. <laughs> Confined to the dockyard until further notice. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, sir, you're pulling Pertwee's oof. Hey? <laughs> hey? <laughs> it's not a joke, Pertwee. The whole dockyard has been placed under a cloak of security. Nobody can go in or out. Ah, but Pertwee's not a nobody. So if you'll sign my pass, sir, just along the dotted, I'll vanish like a genie with a light brown ale. <laughs> <laughs> now, forget it, Chief. You're not going anywhere. None of us is. Even the Admiral can't get out. And he was due at a security meeting at the Ministry of Defence in Whitehall. But what's it all about, sir? I can't tell you too much. <clears throat> Why not, sir? Because I don't know too much. <laughs> all I can tell you is, at this very moment, Britain has been rendered nautically knackered. <laughs> For some mysterious reason, not a single ship in the whole of Portsmouth Dockyard can move. Pardon? It's true. Their engines won't work. Pardon? <laughs> no, no, that, that's, that's what started this security check, you see. There was this fleet exercise, you see. <laughs> in which every frigate and destroyer is supposed to take part, with the exception of Troutbridge, pressed their little starters and stayed right where they were. <laughs> Stone me. Yeah, hang on. Why wasn't we asked to take part then? They said they wanted the exercise to be a success. <laughs> well, it's nothing wrong with our engines. We could have gone. Mr. Sharp, our engineering officer, gave him a bit of a run-up this morning. What for? No choice, sir. He leant against the starter button when he was drinking his coffee. <laughs> Ah, so that's why Captain Povey and everybody else suspects that the saboteur is aboard Troutbridge. Whoever it is receives his instructions from the Russian fishing fleet out in the Atlantic. <laughs> I hear it all now. Da, 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 dit, 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 da, da, da. Stop me. What does that mean? It's Morse code for da 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 di, 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 di. <laughs> I know that, sir. I know that. Mr. Phillips, sir, are you seriously suggesting that one of the gallant sailor lads aboard Troutbridge would cannobble the engines of the rest of the fleet for poultry gain? They always work the same way. Is it? They've got a two way radio disguised as a button on their comms. <laughs> and the heel of their left shoe undoes so that every time they turn left, it unscrews itself and takes a picture. <laughs> what are they? Their right shoe? <laughs> Who knows? They'll stoop to anything. <laughs> it's, it's when they get you back to their HQ at Smirsh you've got to worry. Smirsh. 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 <laughs> no matter if you're the most handsome, elegant espionage agent in the world of sex, snobbery and sudden death, they'll spot your funny shoe unscrewing itself in the end. <laughs> I know what you mean, sir. <laughs> there you are, sir. Quietly sitting in the laboratory. Laboratory. <laughs> Minding your own business. When up slinks, up slinks this beautiful white-clad nurse. And she gives you a truth drug from her hippopotamus syringe. Yes, yes, yes. Then they take you to the dungeon in this remote castle and keep you alive on wafer biscuits. <laughs> wafer biscuits? Why wafer biscuits? Well, the jailers are too afraid to enter your cell, you see, so they, they push your food under the door. And let's face it, the only food you can push under a door is a wafer biscuit. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I mean, if there was room for a steak and kidney pud with two veg, you could squeeze yourself under the door, couldn't you? <laughs> exactly, exactly, of course. They can tip custard and gravy under the door, but they make your wafer biscuit go soggy. <laughs> Despicable, dirty and dastardly dogs. I agree, Chief, but all the evidence points to the fact 
They've, we've got one of those on board. I agree, sir. But who can it be? May I come into the wardrobe, chaps? Uh, help yourself, sir. Could we? I was speaking to Mr. Phillips. The day the commanding officer of the ship has to ask a chief petty officer if he can come into the wardroom has yet to dawn. Oh, sorry, sir. My error. <laughs> But make yourself comfortable, just the same. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a nice evening out last night, sir? Me? Out? Uh, oh, yes. Um, very pleasant, thank you. Where'd you go to, sir? Where? Here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Where? Uh, yes, well, if you must know, I, I, I went... Um, I had... Um, yes, sir? I went to a meeting of the... Um, G and H G G uh, with uh, uh, for a, 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 a businessman's lunch. Uh, a businessman's dinner uh, uh, called... Um, uh, Rita. <laughs> Mrs. Spann's dinner called Rita. Uh, excuse me, come on, Marissa. Uh, G and H G G. Uh, what does that stand for, sir? Oh, um, just initials. Where, where was the dinner held, sir? Oh, um, not far. Uh, excuse me, uh, pardon me, come on, Marissa. Uh, come on, Marissa. You, uh, you inadvertently admitted to tell us what G and H G G stands for, sir. Oh, did I? Yes, sir. Yes. You were absolutely right. Well, now, any news this morning? Yes, I'm afraid there is, sir. Yes, there is, sir. There's, there's a security cloak in the dockyard. And nobody can go out or in or communicate by phone or letter with anyone outside until further notice. What? But this is nonsense. Uh, yes, sir, nonsense. nonsense. Excuse me, sir. I, just, I, I, still, I, still would like, I still would like to know what G and HGG stands for, sir. Uh, this won't do. I, I can't get out of the dockyard. <laughs> I've got an urgent appointment with them. Um, Rita, on Thursday evening. Well, excuse me, sir, but the, them, uh, the, uh, the, uh, excuse me, uh, come on, uh, uh, Marissa, but the initials, uh, you still haven't told Pertwee what uh, G and HGG stands for, sir. No. Uh, now, what's all the security cloak about? <laughs> well, as I understand it, sir, with the exception of Troutbridge, the entire home fleet is at a standstill. Their engines won't start. What a sheer inefficiency. Our engines are all right. I heard Mr Sharp giving them a run-up this morning. Excuse me, Mr... Mr. Morris, Morris, the suspense is killing me. I've, I've got to, I've got to know. I've, 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 what, 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 what is, what is G and H G G stand, stand for? Uh, that's right. Next year you must come with us. <laughs> well, my mind's made up. Somehow or other, on Thursday evening, I've got to get out of the dockyard. I'll uh, see you later. You know, Chief, I have the most terrible suspicion. We've heard enough from a certain gentleman to give us cause to believe that he is the reason for the security cloak. My very thoughts, sir. After all, they did say it was somebody aboard Trout Breach, condemned out of his own cake hole. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, didn't you catch it? The word Reacher, sir. If you read the spy that wouldn't come in from the rain, you'll recall <laughs> that the Russian spy ring was codenamed Olga. Yes, yes, you're right. Yes. Remind me, what did Olga stand for? Almost anything, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, sir. No, no. Olga stood for Old Lenin's Gorpin Association. <laughs> the filthy swine. <laughs> the author's very words, sir. Now, Mr. Phillips, bearing in mind what you've just heard, what does Rita stand for? Almost anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I see. No, no, I don't. No. What, what does Rita stand for? Russian Intelligence Territorial Association. <laughs> Chief, you're not serious. I'm afraid I am, sir. There is no doubt about unsuspicious minds. The Comte de Marie is a rip-roaring Russian spy. Gosh, you're right. Filthy swine. <laughs> Man. Lieutenant Commander Murray to see you, sir, on an urgent personal matter. Oh, very well, send him in. Uh, this won't take a minute, sir. Just sign this authority. You can borrow my pen. No, 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 wait a, wait a, wait a minute. What's it all about? It's just your authority to leave the dockyard on Thursday night. Forget it. Oh, exactly. Even I can't get out until the security cloak is over and they've caught the saboteur. Uh, no, no, sir, that won't do at all. Oh, yes, it will. It can last as long as it likes. As long as it means that I don't have to go home to my dear wife, Ramona. <laughs> it's her, uh, her spring cleaning week. You mean you get in the way when she's vacuum cleaning and polishing the lino? No, I mean she gets in the way when I'm vacuum cleaning. And polishing. <laughs> well, this may be all very convenient for you, sir, but my entire reputation as an officer and a gentleman is at stake. Well, just where do you want to go to that's so important, Stephen? Oh, uh, out and about. Out and about, do you? Well, I'm afraid you're going to stay in and around. Even around. <laughs> there must be 
some way I can get out. Come on, then, Maddie. If there was some way you could get out, there would be some way my wife could get in. And she'd have found it by now. You must be going to meet somebody terribly important. Yes. Uh, uh, no, it, it's um, a businessman's dinner called Rita. Uh, uh, no, it's a um, personal matter. If I fail to keep the appointment, it'll reflect on the service and my entire future will be ruined. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Very interesting. <laughs> Leave it to me, Commander Murray. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thanks very much, sir. It is extremely urgent. Yes, quite, quite. Well, off you go. I'll be in touch. And Chesley? Yes? Get me security on the phone. I think it is high time the investigating officers had a word with Lieutenant Commander Murray about this mysterious meeting with persons unknown on Thursday. <laughs> Well, I still don't know what I'm here for. I mean, if you wanted somebody to be on lookout while you spy on an Englishman, why didn't you pick another Englishman? <laughs> Sell their own grandmother for fourpence, they will, and give you green stamps. <laughs> it's quite simple, Ghostine. All you have to do is stand out there in front of Commander Murray's cabin whilst the chief and I go in and search for any evidence convicting him of spying and destroy it. Well, why pick on me? I mean, it's not very nice, is it? Going through another man's things. No, I'm against the whole project. We Welsh are a proud and honourable race. In any case, no mention has been made of how much I'm going to get for doing it. <laughs> to, to Bob. Done. Start searching. I'm on guard. <laughs> right, Chief. Stand well back, sir. Let the airpin see the mortis. <laughs> Good man. Now, carry on. You know... You know, Chief, I've just been thinking. What's it? What? They'd never get a wafer biscuit under that door. <laughs> I mean, would you mind? Say, so look, I'm consternating. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Eight bells and all's well. Oh, shut up, you Carnarvon clot. <laughs> I just thought you'd like to know it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. Have a wafer biscuit and keep quiet. Hey, all, sir. Cabin door open, sir. We'll, we'll start with the books. I don't like this, sir. Not at all. I don't. I don't like Neither it. Neither do I. We're helping a comrade in arms. We, we've got to save him from, from himself. We, we, we've got to find that evidence and destroy it. If necessary, eat it. <laughs> eat it? Gosh, look at this. What? Oh, all this here, look. Condemned out of his own library. Pardon? The Siege of Stalingrad by Malcolm Muggeridge. <laughs> the Life and Times of Lenin. Yes, and Dr. Ziggadigadigok. Dr. Dr. Zogadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigadigad
urgent arrangements of a strictly private nature to attend to, so you leave my cabin at once because I don't want to catch you in here again. <laughs> Who's there? Friend or foe? Uh, a friend, uh, I, I hope. Oh, yes, sir. I think we know you. Now, can I help you? Oh, yes, Constable. I'm uh, uh, just going out for a bit. That you're not, sir? The bit left wait. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a, uh, a security cloak, sir. No, it's, uh, it's half past four. I'll be late. Look, uh, it's all right. Here's my officer's identity card. I'm fully aware of that nonchalant one-pound note lying carelessly under the celluloid, but it won't save you now. But I've got to go out. On the contrary, sir, you've got to go in. <whistles> Over here, lads. Get your handcuffs ready. Our little present to the Board of Inquiry from Russia with love. <laughs> I think that this man is a viper in the Navy's bosom. Armbridge? Yes, yes. Been here all the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> Followed every word. Yes, yes. Open and shut case. Yes, yes. Bosoms. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the question? <laughs> there wasn't one, you daft old twit. <laughs> this farce has gone on long enough. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm innocent. No, no, gentlemen, no. I've been framed, I tell you, framed. And I have a shrewd idea who by. I shan't name names, but Captain Povey will not get away with it this time. Admiral, I really... No, must... you can't, Povey. Should have seen to that before you got here. <laughs> now, just a minute, everyone. It may surprise you to know that Commander Murray has got a surprise witness for the defence. And you've got to listen to him. Oh, all right. Who is it? Me. Oh. <laughs> Very well. If Commander Weatherby from security, who's in charge of the case, has no objections, put your first question to him. All right, I'll do that. Now, gentlemen of the jury, it's time the facts came out. I demand to know what this is all about. Yes. Perhaps I can. 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 The whole thing, the whole thing appears to have been around. Now, if I, if I can be, 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 if I can as I see it, as I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the world. As I see it, the current case is one of the most important cases in the history of the He's on his way from London to explain fully, but in the meantime, don't use any of the last consignment of diesel oil ozone delivered to the dockyard. Huh? Well, I gather their technicians have just discovered that water has leaked into one of their main storage tanks, rendering the fuel useless. Oh, good grief. I knew it was too good to last. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I now have evidence that the reason the engines of the home fleet stopped was that there was water in the last consignment of fuel. Now, just a minute, that's not good enough. If that was the case, why didn't the Troutbridge engine stop? Shut up. No, no, I demand an answer. Okay, well, I'll give it to you. It was because a certain sub-lieutenant was all set to send us out on a fleet exercise with practically no fuel because he'd forgotten to take on a fresh supply. Our engines were running on what was left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clay. <laughs> well, just, just a minute, just a minute. Before we pack it in, you still haven't explained where you were the other night, Murray. Oh, I... I um... I was at a um, business dinner called Rita. Rita? What? Don't tell me you're Stevie Kins. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, jumping flower sifters. Rita's my daughter and I'm Daddy Kins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clan. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I... I kept her waiting an hour as it is. Oh, yes, that's, that's right, Stevie Kins. <laughs> Off you go. Have a lovely evening, Kins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't do anything Daddy Kins wouldn't like you, Kins, would you, Stevie Kins? Oh, shut up. I'm so late now, we'll have missed the war. We'll only see the peas. <laughs> Now, 
Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee have been Spy Catching in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was a sub lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the CEO, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Pertwee was played by Richard Caldicott, Rito was Heather Chase and the Admiral was Tenuel Evans and Admiral Armbridge was played by Michael Bates. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.